everybody has a million excuses. Oh, I got kids. I got no time. I got, you know, I'm a little bit in debt. You know, hear that, yeah. this, that, and the other thing. Nobody really has an excuse, right? Nobody has an excuse. See, we can come up with a million excuses or one compelling reason why, mm. right? And when you come up with one compelling reason why, that trumps the million excuses. Hey friend, this is a big one. We are going to introduce you to a super champion in the Empire Mindset today. We're going to go through a case study and tell you about one of our biggest success stories. So welcome to the Empire Podcast. I'm Craig Valentine with... Pedros Koulian. All right, Pedros Koulian. We are going to talk about a really cool guy named Steve Weatherford. Yes. And the empire that he is building. Now, he's in our Empire Mastermind group, and we love the guy to death because he's super high energy. And you know what's amazing, though? Because I would at first think, my goodness, how are we going to rein this guy in and get him focused? But he actually has amazing focus. So why don't you tell us how that has played in his favor? Focus. By the way, this guy is one of the most, he's giant and he is definitely a commanding personality, but one of the most humble, down to earth, kindest guys I've ever met. And it always says, now how can I serve you? Who can I introduce you to? What doors can I help open for you? And I think there's a whole podcast to be done on that where that's concerned. But um, man, this guy, so Steve Weatherford, you know, if you don't know him, he, he was a Super Bowl champion. He played for the Jets and the Giants, right? He retired from the Giants. Yep. I've learned the whole story. And um, not that I know anything about sports. Sure. But no comment. <laughs> so when we went out surfing, when so uh, either Jay, Jay Ferrugia or Lewis House introduced me to, to Steve. And uh, I was like, hey man, welcome to California. He just moved to San Diego from, from the East Coast want to go surfing I'll bring a couple boards out we're uh, we're surfing and I said how did you make this transition from retiring from football and you're now selling a like a fitness program on how to make your arms bigger like connect those dots for me Steve he goes man first of all I have no idea what I'm doing and this is why Lewis or Jay introduced you to me and hopefully you'll be able to put me on, on, on my right path. Because he was just doing it on a sheer force of will. Sheer force of will. He Which is kind of like Empire Foundation. Yes, it really is. He was in hustle and grind mode and not scale and structure mode, yeah. right? And Empire's mode is always scale and structure. Yeah. And so I was like, well, t tell me how this came to be. You probably have a lot of, a lot of uh, opportunities at once we retired here. So it turns out, uh, when we got back to the car, he takes out his I iPhone and he goes, uh, look at me during all my games. He was wearing those long sleeve, uh, like the um Under Armour compression yep. shirts. He goes, you know why I was wearing those even on the hottest days? I, had, I have no idea, man, why? He goes, I was always self-conscious, even though I was one of the best athletes on the planet, I was always self-conscious about my small arms. Mm -hmm. He goes, so when I retired, I decided to make my weakness, the thing I was most self-conscious and self-aware of, make my weakness into my strength. And he did that so much, the people started, Steve, your arms are huge. Like, he made his weakness his strength, and he decided he's going to create the Armageddon program, right? right? Which is what he has, and of course, start selling that online for everyone else who's kind of suffered with a small body part and wants to, you know, make make it larger. A lot, a lot of guys, which actually kind of ties in great with, you know, Lewis House and his book, The Mask of Masculinity. Yeah. So many people think that, you know, gee, an athletic male guy, you probably have no problems, right? But in reality, like he has to have the aggression mask on the masculine mask on the tough guy mask and he can't be vulnerable because come on man up you know right yeah, yeah. um that's the other man up right there's man up as an entrepreneur there's the man up of like hey be a tough guy which put we, the mask on put the mask on but anyway going back to that he created this product and so steve did steve did and there's a guy who has gone from one industry and taken his weakness and made it into a strength in a completely different industry. Right, absolutely. And so, you know, he's got a couple of things that an empire builder requires in order to be successful. First of all, he goes with the giving hand. He's a generous guy, very great guy, very humble guy. So he's always learning. He's willing to go and ask for help. Most people aren't willing to put the ego aside, but he is. And then therefore, he is also always improving, always related to Kaizen, constant never-ending improving, which is another big, important part of being an empire builder and he is also really really focused so and then he has the vision of like taking how can i go and share this with the world and not just have an info product but i'm going to have t-shirts and all this stuff yeah. 
And then he came and, and worked with you recently, and I want to hear what you guys talked about and how you're going to go and take that really strong foundation that he has and build it higher up. Well, you know, it's, it's funny you say that. So one of his biggest keys to success that everybody listening or watching to this podcast can implement right away is speed of implementation. Oh, yeah. Remember when he was out here in January for the Empire Mastermind, we sat acro across him when it was time for his hot seat, and we said, dude, you got to build a team. You can't do it all yourself just because he's a... Midwesterner, oh, right. hardworking athlete. His thing is, I could do it all myself. I could stay awake days at a time. I could work at a pace and get it all done. Right, because he was saying how he worked till like three o'clock the day before. And we're like, no, you can't yeah. keep on doing that. So he said, you, you got to build a team. Your team has to have responsibilities, and then they have to meet your expectation. Well, sure as shit, he shows up. What are we now? Uh, of a, a few weeks. Just a few oh, weeks. That was in January. That was September. Yeah. September. So just a few weeks away now, and he shows up with his team here. And he goes, Bedros, you told me to hire a good team of high performers. Here they are. I found them. Delegate, help me delegate our roles and responsibilities. Amazing. And there's, you know, when you talk about what a high performer does, and when you talk about building an empire, scaling an empire quickly, in an industry that he's completely unaware of, one, the fitness industry, as far as like fitness workouts, because yes. the guy's just an athlete, and two, the internet marketing space, right? right? But he hired people around him. So he had a full-time videographer that showed up with him. Okay. He had a implementer. So basically like someone who's a COO, right? A, a chief operations officer that takes his ideas and turns them into physical, tangible, sellable things. Yep. And then of course he had an admin, someone to clear out the bottleneck in his life. Sure. Yeah. And he showed up with them and we literally over a four hour time span gave everybody their roles and responsibilities, their marching orders, and then he said, hey, man, thank you. How can I help you? What else can I do for you? And, you know, we took some pictures and off he went. But the biggest lesson there is he puts his pride and ego aside and he said, tell me what I need to do, fellas. He did it within a matter of weeks, shows up with the team, gets the marching orders. Again, putting the ego aside, right? I mean, it is kind of weird sitting here telling a Super Bowl champion what to do in business, but that's yeah. we've done this before. And, um, and that's how you time compress results, is you get speed of implementation, but you also get the marching orders, go do the work. Get the marching orders, go do the work. And when, you know, you don't sit around and wait, okay, well, I've done my marching orders, I'm just going to wait till the next mastermind. No, you come back and get more marching orders, right? Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. And he, he texted me actually just yesterday, um, uh, telling me that, because he was in the middle of a launch when he brought his team out here. Wow. Right? So he's launching his, his newest program, which was a 30-day uh, uh, metabolic reset. It's yep. a killer program that he has. And... We gave him one idea to take that 30-day metabolic reset and to make it a continuity program. Okay. Where when you get on that program, you're now part of a continuity program. So we took a one-off sale and turned it into a continuity program for him that's going to result in helping more people with greater issues, right? Because after your 30 days, if you're left on your own, you're going to go back to your old habits. Sure. So I said, Steve, you've got a duty and an obligation to help these people pass 30 days. The only way you're going to be able to do that is to make it a continuity program where they're paying you for additional services, program support. Yeah. And they need to know that they're plugged into you and your team. So it's a win-win for the client and for you financially and with what your mission is, which he wants to help literally millions of people with their with their fitness goals. Because you can't really build an empire on a one-time sale. It has you to can't. be continuity, recurring revenue into it, right? Exactly right. And so again, take, taking an athlete who's never even heard of continuity, understands the idea of continuity, and explaining it to him that imagine waking up the first of next month and knowing that you've got fifty, sixty, a hundred thousand dollars scheduled to come in this month because people are signed up for a membership style payment pattern. Yeah. Wow, that was huge for him. And he's right now implementing it and texted me saying, Hey man, it's all in place and I've got my first few hundred people on board already. All right. So everybody watching this is saying, Great, he can do it. Pro athlete, lots of money. I can't do that. Come on. Come on, guys. Talk yeah. about somebody that I can relate to. So tell us why. That's not a valid excuse. That's really not a valid excuse because I will tell you about someone who you can relate to. Um, a kid that was raised on a farm who wore, you know, torn up, torn up jeans, um, just sat next to his father on a tractor, never really shared a conversation with his father on that tractor, um, had an addiction to sugar, uh, to alcohol, right? We're talking about you. And then there's, there's that kid who comes from a foreign country mm -hmm. who doesn't speak English, doesn't understand the culture, um, doesn't even know anybody. Right. Uh, grows up fat, low self-esteem, poor confidence, laughed at, called names, told, yelled at, go back to your own country. 
And so if you and I can do it, and you certainly aren't a pro athlete, and I certainly am not a pro athlete, right? right. And we didn't grow up with the best circumstances in our favor. Right. We didn't, right? The answer is, when you look at what you and I, Steve Weatherford, and all successful people have in right. common, is resiliency. Yeah. But here's another one, like Shauna Kaminsky, you know, teacher, uh, you know, broken relationship, you know, busy mom. Yeah. All these reasons not to, you know, a little shy. But, I mean, she's been coaching with us since 2009, almost a decade now. Every year, massive growth, personal, professional. She is just the mama bear now, just yeah. takes care of everyone, is, you know, paying it forward, everything. And, you know, she has a million excuses. Everybody has a million excuses. Oh, I got kids. I got no time. I got, you know, I'm a little bit in debt. You know, hear that and yeah. this, that, and the other thing. Nobody really has an excuse, right? Nobody has an excuse. See, we can come up with a million excuses or one compelling reason why, mm. right? And when you come up with one compelling reason why, that trumps the million excuses. The, the, the problem is, and Seth Godin really talked about this in an, in an email, and I think it's worth bringing it up here. He talks about work that produces dopamine work that produces serotonin. Both of these hormones, both of these chemicals in your body are feel-good hormones, mm -hmm. right? When you're speaking from stage, Craig, and you're talking, teaching the audience on how to structure their life, create their vision, have their perfect life, man, and they stand up and they give you a, a standing ovation, that is a dopamine spike you're getting. Like you sure. feel good, you feel like you made change right then and there. Hours later, that dopamine goes away. That is the equivalent of that same dopamine spike happens when we post a picture up on Facebook, social media, Instagram, whatever. You get the likes, you get the comments, you get the shares, and you feel good momentarily or for a few hours, and the dopamine high goes away. Serotonin is when you wrote the book, Perfect Day Formula, right? right? When you created the perfect. Uh, perfect life retreat, uh, when you're creating the perfect life mastermind, where you're gonna have greater impact over a longer period of time uh, through, a, through a large audience. Impact and legacy. Impact legacy creates serotonin, the hmm. feel-good hormone that lasts and lasts and lasts like the Energizer Bunny. Oh, it's amazing, I never heard that before, and obviously Fit Body Boot Camp is a great example of that as well. So, so rounding back up with Steve, he has had all of those characteristics that we talked about before, what about in terms of vision and planning? Is he just jumping from one thing to the next or is he really looking ahead as you, you build the empire for him? And how important is that for everybody listening to say, you know, I've got a great idea right now, I've got some traction, but what do they need in terms of that vision to move forward? You know what, there is plenty of room for vision and planning, but sometimes when you're just on a hot streak, you have to just keep deploying the next thing. And I'll give you a great example. We said, hey, Steve, don't roll out supplements yet. Supplements on a continuity basis are a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. He goes, guys, I'm on a roll. You guys gave me all the marching orders. I've been on fire. I'm making all these videos. I'm adding so much value to my community. I'm going to roll out the supplements anyway. And he rolled out the supplements, and sure as shit, he knocked it out of the park. Awesome. So it's a great example of sometimes you have to just say, to hell with the planning. My gut says this. And there's so much value about building your entrepreneurial gut. You get enough marching orders from the right coaches, soon enough you start thinking like them. And at the end of the day, you have a better pulse and beat on your business than anyone else. Yep. So Steve's like, you know what? Enough people are asking me about the supplements that I take because he did a great job peppering those supplements into his social media videos and, and posts. There was a demand for it. He created the, the demand and he, he launched it and he sold it. On the flip side, 90% of the time, if you don't plan, and if you don't have a clear vision of what you want that plan to look, you're headed for disaster. You might be successful in a one-off promotion or in a one-off sale launch, product launch and generate half a million, two, three million, 70% of it goes to affiliates. By the time you pay your taxes, you're really stuck with 40, 50, 100,000 but you don't have an empire there. You don't have an ongoing business with legs. Yeah, and I, I like one thing that you said there. You talked about how he was looking at some other people doing some other stuff, and he was surrounding himself with all these other models. And so, you know, that's one of the really th important things about getting to seminars, getting in mastermind groups, getting uh, coaches, and seeing what else is out there. Otherwise, you just live in this little bubble, and you can't build an empire in a bubble, right? That's exactly right. And again, when we go back to Steve, here's a guy who says, I don't want to be defined as you know, Steve Weatherford, Super Bowl champion. Right. Like, that was just a phase in my life. And let's go back to our audience listening and watching this. You don't have to be defined by who you were. You're not the kid who sat on the tractor without a voice. Right. I'm not the kid who came from a foreign country and was laughed at and went to many different schools and never felt like I fit in. And so oftentimes we kind of take on who we were and we just carry that baggage with us like a, like a fucking anchor. 
there's no reason to carry that with us. And so Steve said, look, this is great being a Super Bowl champion. I'm letting that go. I'm going to be known for something new. Yeah. Bigger and better. And, bigger and, and better. Massive, bigger following. That, so, that's what you need to do. Yeah. So first step for everybody listening to think big, like an empire builder, action taker, speed of implementation, all these things. What is the first step that they can do today to move ahead that really, really matters and will move the needle in their life? Well, if someone's got a business or a good business idea, the very first thing you can do is to find yourself a mentor. Mm -hmm. If someone like Steve could do that, right, who has... You know, a lot of pride and ego, but he just can easily put it aside and go, you know what? I'm an empty vessel. Right. Show me what to do, right? Yeah. He reached out to his friends and they connected him with us and show me what to do. Because when you find a mentor, you're really taking their lessons in life, both success and failure, and you're going, oh, show me all the things to avoid, mm -hmm. right? Show me all the things to do yep. to move faster in life, going back to time collapsing. And when you can time collapse, you, you're no longer losing money. You're no longer being frustrated. You're no longer stressing out. Instead, it seems like, win after win after win, and that's because the mentor is guiding you through a process. So the biggest thing you can do, obviously, in the search of a mentor is, one, do they walk the walk, or do they just profess but don't practice? If they walk the walk, great. The next thing I always do is the Ronald Reagan method. Trust but verify. Got it. All right, you say you walk the walk, and it looks like you're successful. Can I talk to two or three of your coaching clients who are in a similar situation as me? You want to make sure that the person actually can coach. You and I have seen plenty of people who are successful at what they do. They get frustrated when they try and explain it to someone else. Sure. They thought they can be good coaches. They had every great intention. There was no bad intention there. They had every great intention. The problem is when they decide to become a coach, they, don't, they, they intuitively, instinctively are good at what they do, but they don't know how to teach step by step. Right. You can be a great player, an all-star, but it doesn't mean you're going to be a great coach. Yes, exactly right. And so make sure that that mentor actually has successful coaching clients in a similar space as yours. And if that's the case, commit financially, commit ethically. And wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly in every way possible and go focused on that one outcome. Awesome, awesome. That's what I did when I had my anxiety attacks. I hired my first coach and I was, I remember sitting there thinking, oh, I'm gonna have a heart attack in the middle of this call, but I still showed up for every call and I got exponential results. And that's how I built my empire. That's how Steve's building his. That's how you built yours. And that's how you'll build yours. Thanks for listening to the Empire Podcast Show. Remember to subscribe on iTunes, share it with your friends and give us a rating. We'd really appreciate that. And make sure to go to empirepodcastshow.com to watch the videos as they come out.